Hey everyone, Lewis here for Pixel Surplus and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create realistic fur effects in Adobe Illustrator. Let's jump right in. So first let's begin by opening up an artboard. I'm going to be creating mine at 1920 by 1080. Now that I have my artboard open, I'm going to begin by typing out PS. PS stands for Pixel Surplus and that's going to be the shape I'm going to be using today. Now, if you want to use a different shape, that's entirely up to you and feel free to do so. This fur effect works best if you're just working with one single stroke. So whether it's a square, a hexagon, a circle or a letter form, it's best just to have one stroke. So I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm just going to draw the shape of the P and the S in the center of each character. It should look something like this once I'm finished. Great, now that I've used the pen tool to create single stroke characters, I'm just going to delete the type from the background. I'm just going to drag my rulers out to make sure that the height and the baseline of my characters are the same. Don't want one being bigger or smaller than the other one. Great, so let's begin by creating a circle. You can do this by clicking the ellipse tool or hitting L on your keyboard. Something to note is that the size of the circle is going to be the size and the width of your fur design on your shape. So take this into consideration. You don't want it to be too small, but you certainly don't want it to be too large so you lose some of the detail. Now that I'm happy with my circle, I'm going to select it and I'm going to head to the gradient tool. You can do this by clicking the gradient tool on the toolbar or hitting G on your keyboard. Now that I have my gradient panel open, I'm going to hit the drop down menu and I'm going to use a black and white. Now for my design, I'm going to be using a blue and pink, similar to the one that you've seen in the thumbnail and at the beginning of the video. I think a bright color blending into a darker color gives you the best outcome. It gives you those bright highlights and those low shadows that just look fantastic. Great. Now that I'm happy with my color palette, I'm going to select my circle and whilst holding alt, I'm going to drag up. You should have two circles with some space in between, something like this. Awesome, now I've got two circles, I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to head to the top and I'm going to choose Object, Blend, Make, then Object, Blend, Blending Options. I'm going to hit the drop down menu and I'm going to change that to specified steps and then I'm going to increase my specified step spacing to 100. Now something to note is that this method does become quite taxing on your computer. So if you find that your computer is struggling to deal with it, it might be best to drop down the specified steps. Now it's time to add our gradient to our artboard. On my artboard, I'm actually using two strokes for my design. The P is all one stroke and the S is one stroke. So I'm going to need to create a copy of my gradient to apply to each. If your design uses more than one stroke, make sure to copy the amount of gradients for the amount of strokes in your design. So I'm going to select one of my gradient bars and one of my strokes, and I'm going to head to object, blend, replace spine. You should now see your gradient jump onto your stroke, beginning your new fur design. I'm then just going to repeat this method for my second stroke. So select both, head to object, blend, and replace spine. Great, now it's time to give our design some fur. Select both of your shapes and head to effect, distort and transform, and roughen. Just like I mentioned before, this method can be quite taxing on your computer, so it's definitely something to be aware of when you start moving around your detail sliders. So this is the fun part. Feel free to mess around with the size and detail however you like to create your perfect fur effect. I think for my design, I'm gonna go with 50% size and a detail of 40. Fun added bonus, if you increase your size and drop your detail all the way down, you get some really peculiar blobby pixelated effects. 
It's kind of fun and it could be used for one of your designs in the future. Great. Now that I've got my fur effect exactly where I like it, I'm just going to make sure that my characters are spaced evenly and in the middle of my artboard. And then I'm going to add a background. I'm going to do this by selecting the rectangle tool or hitting M on my keyboard and dragging out a rectangle at 1920 by 1080. I'm then going to fill my rectangle with the same gradient we used for our design. I'm just going to take down the brightness of the background by using a tool that I think is really underutilized in Adobe Illustrator. Select our background, head to edit, edit color, and we're going to use the recolor artwork. Head to the bottom of the panel and just select this circle. Show saturation and hue on color wheel. I'm then going to grab either the blue or the pink handle and just drag them ever so slightly into the center. This will affect both colors evenly and once you let go you'll be able to see a preview of your new color. I'm happy with this so once I'm happy I'm just going to click back onto my artboard and there you have it how to create a realistic fur effect using Adobe Illustrator. Thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe and jump into the comments and let us know what you used this effect for I'd love to hear it. And if you've got any ideas for our next video, please let us know. We here at Pixel Surplus want to know what our community think. And whilst you're down there, why don't you check out the description where you'll find links to Pixel Surplus. Pixel Surplus is home to the best free fonts, textures, mockups, templates, and tutorials on the internet, as well as premium font bundles at 90% discounts. I'm talking beautiful fonts at crazy low prices. Go check it out right now. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day everyone.